I, I just, uh, Dr. Hayden, want to thank you so much for doing this and want to thank you uh, for your great work at the uh, Library of Congress. I've really followed uh, the work that you've been doing. And one of the things that um, I thought was a great initiative was this Veterans History Project, uh, which my staff and I have been involved with the last year. And we've been collecting oral histories from veterans all across New Mexico. And can you tell us more about how this project began and uh, why you have continued this work? And thank you, Senator, because you've been such a supporter of the Library of Congress and especially with our poetry uh, and poet laureate program as well and your interest in veterans history. And in fact, the Veterans History Project was started by a member of Congress about 20 years ago. And he was actually at a family picnic and he had uncles who were starting to talk about, and you know what happens at family reunions, some of the elders start to talk, and they were talking about their World War II experiences. And he was so intrigued, and he hadn't heard these stories before, that he just grabbed a, a, a microphone or a, a device to, started, to start recording them. And that's how it all started, because then he really championed making sure that we were capturing the stories of veterans and making sure that we had, and the, the program has grown to now over 110,000 oral histories. And we've received not only the video and now audio recordings, but also letters and diaries and photographs and everything. So it's a rich archive that's available to the public on our website. You know, when I when I think of veterans, uh, Dr. Hayden, I first think of my father. He um, flew over 50 missions in a B-24 Liberator over Europe as a waste gunner and I, I, he never really talked about it. He, he said um, very modestly, he said the, the heroes, I'd hear people call him a hero and he would say something along the line. He said the heroes were the ones we left behind. And so, and, so this project very close to me like that. And I'm, I'm so glad you brought up that point because what we are finding is that so many of the veterans will say just that, just what your dad would say. I just uh, rode the supply truck, or I just, and there's always that caveat. And what you find out when they start talking is that those deliveries were being delivered to a very crucial point in a battle or in a, a conflict or something like that. And then we want to capture the full range of stories because everyone that was involved in any type of military action was participating and had a significant part. And so I'm glad you said that because when you, we have field kits that we give interviewers uh, and anybody can do the interview. Um, one of the things to get the veterans to loosen up about that is to say, well, tell me about basic training. <laughs> and that seems to be the key to get them to really start to talk. But that not, reluctance to share their experiences seems to be a very common thing. Yeah, it, for sure. And, you know, New Mexico, my, my father probably spent the last 15 years of his life in New Mexico. So he would point out to me about the tradition of Native Americans and Hispanics and others in New Mexico serving uh, with great distinction. And so we wanted to capture that. So we went to all 33 counties in New Mexico, my staff and myself uh, going around to try to make sure every county was represented. Can you speak a little bit about the importance of including diverse voices in this project? There are so many stories and they're all part of the American story. And I remember visiting New Mexico at the Native American communities as part of the Institute of Museum and Library Services. And the stories and the experiences of the Native community were just as powerful and significant. And we want to make sure that those stories are on the library's websites, that 
people understand that everyone had a part and plays a part in defending this nation? Well, the, these um, experiences that we've collected are part of our national identity from the survivor of the Bataan death march to the Navajo code talkers. Um, I think my own father, you know, flew those missions in his B-24 uh, Liberator. Uh, we can learn so much from the stories of our veterans and we have an obligation to ensure that these stories live on. So I'm proud and humbled to present this collection of 90 oral histories to you today for the Library of Congress's Veterans History Project. These stories deepen our eternal gratitude to our, nation vet, our nation's veterans, and I hope they will deepen our commitment to honoring their service with the support they have earned. And they will take their place right alongside those 110,000 stories and be a vital part of telling the American story and the role that Native Americans had in this. And we thank you so much because this was an area that we really wanted to make sure that was covered in the Veterans History Project. We had hoped to have a ceremony and to in person, and we are looking forward to the day that we can have something in person, but you can rest assured that these 90 oral histories will be processed and they will be put into the Veterans History Project as soon as we can get them in there. So thank you so much. Well, thank you. And I, I just wanted to share with you a couple of thoughts about the interviews that I did. They were very meaningful to me on a personal basis. And I conducted uh, many interviews myself and my staff also did interviews. For example, I sat down with a good friend of mine who's now known as Chairman Paul Torres of the Isleta Pueblo, which is a little south of Albuquerque, who earned commendations for his service to our nation in the Navy in Vietnam. And one of the things he did is when he returned, he was elected uh, in the Pueblo to lead uh, his community. And that's the remarkable thing about our veterans is how when they came back, they were all committed to improving their community my father ended up running for the Congress. Many members ran for Congress, ran for Senate because they wanted to give back to the country that they had served. And they want to continue serving. And that's the part that we want to capture. And part of the interview process, and I know that when you did the interviews and you had your list of questions that we suggest and things, it, also tries to capture what did the veteran do once they returned. And that's a way to get those stories in about, well, I joined the city council or I was part of my group that decided to do this. But that continuation of service once the veterans come back and also the challenges they face. We want people to be able to express that as well. Uh, Dr. Hayden, is there anything you'd like to share about your experience with this project, how important it is to you personally, or why it's important to the library? Well, my father and grandfather were both um, veterans, and when I joined the Library of Congress, I actually took the training to be an interviewer, too. <laughs> and I want to encourage everyone uh, to have that experience, and you can get on the loc.gov vets uh, on our website because it's a very uh, interesting process. We take you through it. There's a 15 minute video, but what you find is that connection with the veteran and getting those stories, the, you get more out of it almost than the veteran. And at this time that's so challenging and people have more time being able to have those conversations and interview veterans using technology, this might be a perfect time. So we would appreciate everyone being part of this and getting more veterans to tell their stories. And also, I have to add this part too, the families of veterans. There are some veterans that aren't able to tell their stories and we encourage, we just signed with um, the Gold Star families and that acts that to have family members 
tell the stories. We would really appreciate that too. Uh, Dr. Hayden, how can veterans, their families and communities contribute to this work? Like you've said, a lot of us have some time at home. How can they, they do, do can you remind us again? You can use the library's website, loc.gov, and that's librarycongress.gov, and just put in vet, vets, and it will take you through it. It's You can do it on the telephone as well. We have a way to record there. There are all types of ways to help the technologically challenge, like I am sometimes. <laughs> but just get on the website, and there's even... Uh, there's an opportunity for you to learn right then. That's great. Well, I, I'm not sure that, that I would say you're technologically challenged because you brought the Library of Congress so far in the technological well, area. But, uh, well, it, but it's the way to reach everyone because the Library of Congress, as you know, we serve Congress and we also serve the people that you serve. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you so much for your work on this project and I hope that someday soon that you and I can meet at the library as we were intending to do and also meet some of the wonderful people you have working on this project and cataloging this project. And so I look forward to that. And I just thank you so much for spending a little time with me today and letting me present these 90 wonderful oral histories to you. Well, thank you. We will get right on those collections. Great. Thank you. And it